presentation on um, uh, my work, uh, Think Big and Think Pig, um, which is about protests, which mainly started from uh, conflict archaeology in the Netherlands and my worry about how this was developing. Uh, conflict archaeology is mainly Second World War archaeology. Um, I, I wanted to drag it into the present to give it more social relevance. Okay, so where does this story start? On January 12, 2016, Dutch municipality of Bernhuizen announced their intent <coughs> to build housing for refugees that were coming from a country in the country as a result of the large-scale immigration from Syria and Northern Africa. This type of temporary housing is called AZC in Dutch. So this was the on only the announcement of an intended political decision, still open to debate. The crowd reacted immediately. That same night, several things happened. An anonymous protest group dumped several meters of cubic sand in the driveway of the private, ma private house of the mayor. Presumably an other group uh, drove to the intended location of the Azadzee and at an empty cornfield and hung up a, a large political banner in the trees which stated that the people are against the uh, asylum center. But what received most attention, however, was that they added two dead piglets to the scene, one hanging in a, from a tree, as you can see here, on the left, in a way which is called, you can call gallow style. Now, both regional and national media and press reacted en masse to the protests. Many people expressed their disgust uh, uh, to the <coughs> hanging of the pig, and the pig itself was quickly removed by the municipality, and only few pictures of, of it exist today. The banners, however, remained, though the protest site underwent continuous small and larger changes during the following weeks. So this all happened in one evening, and the next days the protest group started to develop more on especially the internet, especially Facebook, where they opened up a, a page where uh, the organization of the protest uh, sort of distanced themselves, distanced themselves from the pig hanging, but the, the site would remain uh, a really a central hub for really blunt and uh, sometimes even straightforwardly racist comments by local uh, population. In the next week, the protest group announced a protest in the town center. They had figured out the time and location that the municipal council would meet in the town hall to prepare for a public meeting. Using their Facebook page, a public meeting on the sub uh, subject of course, uh, using the Facebook page and quickly made posters, uh, the anti-asylum group organized a protest at exactly the same time to make their opinion heard. At 1900 hours, on January 18, this is this year, January uh, 18, a group of a thousand people gathered at the Mrs. Square next to the town hall. They made a lot of, made a lot of noise using distribu distributed whistles and a megaphone. Soon, however, the atmosphere started to change as some of the protesters started to use heavy fireworks to add to the protest. While regional press was doing live, and national press was doing live report at the events, protesters started to throw eggs at the town hall, then handheld protest signs um, and other things, like a firecracker bomb, which made everybody jump when it exploded. Only 30 minutes after the start of the protest, the, po the protest organizers hastily ended the protest, the formal protest, but the crowd had no plans of going home. Only minutes later, they charged the town hall, hammering the building with their hands. Riot police quickly entered the scene, as you can see here in the background, and cleared part of the square, later making several arrests. I want to make a strong point here regarding rurality, that Hayes, the village of Hayes is really a rural village. The riot police at the crowd square, at the center of the square, is, is really a, a thing that never happens in, in Hayes. At least I have no uh, memory of it. The following days, the municipality spent a lot of effort in removing all the eggs from the town hall, which dried up to become sort of yellow, uh, sticky uh, substance, hard as concrete. While cleaners were working in the background of this picture, the symbol of the pig shows up once again as a plushie doll on a bench and was immediately photographed by a journalist. The cleanup concludes the main offence in Hayes I'm going to discuss tonight, and the later public meetings would be more organised and more quiet, not in the least because of the high presence of crowd and police control. The protest site at the Azadze location would remain intact until the municipality stopped their plans for building the <coughs> Azadze refugee housing and the pigs would return elsewhere in the country later as a symbol for anti-immigration uh, protests. So when this all happened, I asked myself, what can I do as an archaeologist? Anti-immigration protests had been going on for two years in the Netherlands, uh, at least, and somehow they never struck uh, 
an archaeological uh, Bellamy. But the protest in Hayes were a turning, turning point for two reasons. Firstly, I grew up in Hayes. I lived there the first 18 years of, of my life. My parents and brother and most of my father's side of the family still live there. And in a way, I know Hayes like my back pocket. In another way, I've been away from, the, from this village for 22 years now, so what do I really know? That the fact that protests like this could emerge in my home, original hometown really surprised me and made me curious, but also worried and angry. Secondly, I became worried in the last few years how conflict archaeology is developing in the Netherlands. Conflict archaeology is very new in a way in, in the Netherlands. There, it's mainly based in contract conflict archaeology nowadays, and which is absolutely putting in a great effort but exists in a system which is actually badly equipped to make a real social impact. On the other hand, there is the academic conflict archaeology, which to my knowledge, lacks the proper financial means at the moment and is mainly interested in adding a new historical narrative from a traditional detached uh, scientific perspective. I'm in Britain here, so I thought I might uh, add this picture of a famous, uh, well-known <laughs> Monty Python scene, because my worry is that conflict archaeology in the Netherlands I will soon be become irrelevant, uh, only concerned with bickering and arguing about who killed who in what moment, without any uh, relationship to the conflict, uh, current conflict and its effect. So a thing oriented at the past. <coughs> Above all, conflict archaeology, um, my worry is, is uh, going to be, uh, it has to be a, a friendly or happy occasion, as this person is saying here. So, This was sort of uh, developing in, in, inside of me, this worry, so I thought this is the moment I'm going to try and do something. But all very uh, preliminary and direct response. So in my opinion, conflict archaeology cannot be about knowledge of the past alone. Knowledge is only a means to a greater goal, I would say. So uh, the greater goal in this case can only be to restore social justice or to resolve all conflict or, most importantly, to prevent new conflict from happening. This is, in my opinion, the only purposeful attention behind conflict archaeology. I'm often inspired by work of uh, many people uh, who are associated to the chat, uh, chat uh, conferences, like uh, Alfredo Gonzalez Ribol in Spain, uh, but also other work of uh, Neil Price on the Peleliu battlefield, uh, the work of, uh, on Mexican immigration trails by Jason de Leon, and um, also the work at UCL by Gabriel Moshenska and, and others. In short, I decided to perform a methodological experiment for the Dutch context in which I would break conflict, conflict archaeology's focus on the past and literally drag it into the present, using this case as an example. Now, normally in a World War II a project in the Netherlands where I <coughs> normally work in, I would start with a um, desktop study in primary sources. Now in this case I use social media. Um, in this case also the platform Bellingcat has been a great inspiration. Bellingcat is a group of independent journalists who uh, use social media and satellite images to prove that uh, the, the uh, MA-17 flight above Ukraine was shot by a Russian book rocket. And in my case, uh, especially Twitter was very helpful. Twitter can be configured to show posts of a selected group of people, uh, their tweets in a selected period of time. And the protest in Hayes had quite a lot of journalists uh, on the spot, which made it uh, possible to check and double check most of the events that happened that evening. And actually I was really surprised with how far you can go with it because you only if you use Twitter you can actually follow the crowd movement on the square and the square is about 100 meters really small but you can actually check how this how this crowd moved and grown and, and diminished over time the blue is of course the police uh, counter uh, actions but social media can also be used to get an idea of the material culture involved, as you can see here. The problem with sites like this one is that they are very, very fleeting. If you want to register anything in the field as an archaeologist, you have to be very fast. Internet research did help me a lot in getting an impression of the material culture, both on the governmental side and the protester side. For example, one journalist deliberately made pictures of protest signs, the uses of whistles, and how they made noise with it, and the use of firewood the first to keep people warm and then uh, change to a weapon a little later. And of course the thrown eggs and firecrackers. I will return to this in a minute with regard to rurality. So then, in my opinion, uh, 
the real work starts as an archaeologist. I mean, I like the, the desktop work, but going in the field is, is really important. So I visited the main two sites of the protest. Here you can see uh, the, the Mrs. Square in the village of Hayes from one direction. Here you can see it in the other direction. And the question is, of course, what you can see it's very tidied up, very cleaned up. This is four days after the protest. So what can there still be uh, found of that event? Well, there's a small fragment of wood. This is actually the only fragment of wood I found of a protest sign. Um, there was the remains or the marks or markings of a smoke bomb. Actually, we, to be more surprised, uh, precise, it was this, probably this smoke bomb, which you can see on the Twitter picture. And uh, they had tried to clean the building uh, to make it free of eggs, but they, didn't, they couldn't do it really properly because it was so stuck. So there's many remains of eggs everywhere on the building. This is the other location I visited. This is the, uh, the actually the protest ground where the Azad Say Center was planned. The gray line is the, the location of the Azad Say, and the protest site is along the, the main road, which is passing the site. There's actually three locations there, the big one in the middle, in the pink, the pink circle, a smaller one, blue one on the top, and a, a red one in the south. So what you, what you can see in the, in the center is uh, large banners, which you've already seen in the previous pictures. Uh, also, most notably, there's these big shipping containers, which were actually transported uh, to the site. Um, think of the effort taken to make this protest. It, they, they really need big machinery here. Uh, that's where the title is coming from of this presentation. And I also want you to take note of the fact that this is the entrance of the field, which I'll come back later. And uh, lastly, it's really important that I made a sort of a, a documentation of how this site looked right when I was there, but it, of course it kept changing continuously. And this is an example of it. There also was a pro-immigration protest, but the, the traces of that had been completely removed by the anti-protesters. We see a little sign saying, uh, refugees welcome. This is the south side of the protest location. There was a small booth where people could sign petitions uh, made of uh, uh, material apparently available at the farm next door. And this is the north side. And this is the site, the, the place that really interested me a lot because there, to my big surprise, there is a, a, a Opel Cadet uh, 1.4 liter car, or as you would say in Britain, a Vauxhall Cadet. And this really made me wonder why a Vauxhall Cadet on this uh, site. So the question now, of course, is I can find things in a field survey and material culture wise on the uh, social media, but how to give meaning to this all, to this all with, with regard to the theme morality? Well, the first thing that came to my mind when thinking of an interpretation of rural protest was to make a relation between the site and um, uh, the protest and the, the, the size of the objects and the availability. As I've already said, the containers are really big. Um, you cannot say that containers are typically for a rural context, <coughs> but it is typical for a rural context to have the machinery available to move them about. And also, the same thing can be said for the lorry or tractor which was used to dump sand uh, on the mayor's uh, private driveway. And to, maybe to a lesser extent, I couldn't really get into the details of this because the, the fragments of eggs were quite small. I was looking for if there were stamps on there, um, stamps from the industry, um, if I could indicate if there, the eggs used came from local uh, uh, yeah, chicken sheds or, or maybe chicken industry. However, regarding availability, uh, I want to take a special notice to the, to the pig here because uh, what you have to know is that the municipality of Hayes is one of the biggest uh, municipalities in the Netherlands uh, with regard to pig farming. In uh, 2014, there were 330,000 pigs kept within municipal borders and therefore dead pigs are also readily available. There are the five minutes already. It's going fast. So, um, they are really readily, readily available. However, there are deeper ways of looking at, uh, at these protests. It's actually quite remarkable that dead piglets had such a profound effect. The hanging was immediately associated with either wishing the immigrants dead or declaring the local government as socially dead. Some have argued that the pigs are a protest against Islamic immigra immigration, as these do not eat pork. It was ethnologist Gerard Royakers who connected the pig hanging directly to an early modern practice of rule in formal jurisdiction called Garivari. Garivari are a form of ritual sanctioning 
uh, of deviant behavior like adultery or domestic violence, always happening without permission of formal authority. It was a form of social control which existed in the province of Brabant from the 17th to the 19th century. Royakers and other mention several occasions in which this system of extrajudicial sanctioning could also take the form of protest against formal authorities. Parivari almost completely disappeared as a cultural expression in the 1950s, but Royaker stresses that the parallels with many elements of the 2016 protest uh, are there. The hanging of corpses like animals like pigs or deer or placement of debris has always been an element of the practice of Karivari. Here we see in this, a very late example where unarmed people hung a dead deer on a church door in Hogelone in 1993. Parivari were always, uh, most of the time, practiced at night time, anonymously, and um, also at significant places like front doors. Here's another example of the front doors, uh, another, another practice of Carivari. Here you can see that large carts have been uh, placed in front of a farmer's house, and I want to bring back in your memory the fact that these uh, main protests were also placed at the main entrance to the Azizé location. There is a deeper uh, way of thinking of uh, pigs in relation to Dutch, cultural, uh, Dutch culture uh, in uh, the carnival, the Catholic carnival, but I'm, I'm short in time so I cannot really go into there, but in the, the Catholic carnival in Hage there's literally pigs anywhere, everywhere. <coughs> this one um, uh, I want to show you is a short video to make the last comparison before I start wrapping things up. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, смотрите, смотрите. Слушайте, у меня же есть пособие по безработице. Халявные бабки, чувак. За покупками. stop at the end is the unemployment uh, center. <laughs> okay, what you've just seen uh, might seem like your, uh, your typical archaeology class of uh, 2015, but it's not. It's actually a, it's a piece of a TV series called uh, New Kids, which started out as a largely amateur YouTube channel and broadcasted in the Netherlands between 2007 and um, 2009. The stories are situated in the existing village of Maaskantje, which is actually located at 16 kilometers away from Bernhezen. The series basically depicts a bunch of lower class unemployed guys living their lives around violence, happy hardcore music and anti-authorianism with a clear link to criminality. If you watch the video closely, you might have seen numerous cultural and countercultural heroic, uh, heroic symbols and behavior like cheap beer, specific clothing and hairstyle, unemployment, a cornfield, harassment of ordinary citizens, and at the center, a Kawasaki Green Opel Manta or Vauxhall Manta in Britain. Though the series may look like a bad joke, it's incredible how popular this thing became in the Netherlands, Germany, and possibly Poland, because this video was subset in uh, Polish language. Um, in the end, they attracted large crowds and made two expensively produced feature films. So why did bad taste become so popular? There seems to be a link here with the growing political populism we are encountering in Europe, which is always associated with a strong anti-immigration sentiment, a deep distrust of democratically elected authorities, and my theory here is that the Opel Cadet at the Azad site has a direct link to anti-authorianism and regional patronism, as broadcasted by the New Kids series. When I looked into this further, as preparation for this presentation, I actually directly found that link in this poster on the Facebook page of the protesters. Yes, uh, it's saying uh, nobody touches Hayes and the, the still is actually derived from one of the two movies. So as a conclusion, I return to my opening question. Um, I was asking myself if I can be relevant uh, as an archaeologist and I have the idea if I drag my normal World War II practice to the present, I might at least be responding to an actual current situation. 
Uh, I did it so far, but uh, one hand, the results are quite preliminary. Um, I can say there is sort of a, a relationship between material culture and protest in a rural setting. And there's also uh, indication that there's a material culture links to broader themes of political skepsis and anti-authorianism, uh, like with the, the Vauxhall car, and possibly a deeper connection to uh, rural provincial ident identities dating back to early modernity. But can this work be seen as socially relevant archaeology? The main objective was methodological. I wish to break a traditional idea of archaeology in the Netherlands that is only concerned about the past. I'm sure I've connected enough material to maybe make an attempt to an academic paper, but I also have to criticize my own methods here. Because basically it's a desktop study with absolutely no public outreach so far. Actually, you're the first public I, I talked to it about it. Also, the attempts to relate anti-immigration protests to the tradition of Carivari, which might be, uh, might be seen as an, as an historical justification of a protest, which I certainly hope it is not. And using a pig in a protest like this is for me out of bounds and uh, ignores the, the nu nuanced difficulties of the problem. So my main question to you, and I hope we can discuss this further later in the today or in the breaks, is how do you think I should proceed? I think we have a responsibility as archaeologists to take action in the site of social injustice. And otherwise, conflict archaeology will indeed become uh, irrelevant. However, taking action uh, and trying to manifest the past, as Alfredo Gonzalez people called it sometimes, uh, might also uh, uh, stir aggression in some groups of people. You cannot really easily identify uh, um, a perpetrator or a, or a minority in this uh, in this case, I think, if you look at it closely. So um, I'm at bay of that, and um, I'd like to ask your help with it. Um, if you have any suggestions, I'm really welcome to listen and to discuss that further. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.